So a couple of weekends a year, our city hosts an official free giveaway weekend. Basically, it's the city's waste department uh, encouraging people to, rather than just tossing crap in the garbage, that if you got something you're not using, put it out in the curb, put a free sign on it. Uh, maybe somebody will take it and get some use out of it. A lot of times it turns into uh, people who resell stuff on Craigslist or Kijiji or eBay, uh, picking up a whole bunch of stuff and then cleaning it up and trying to resell it. But whatever, if it gets it out of my garbage and it doesn't uh, end up in the landfill, so much the better. But me being the cheapskate I am, I tend to inherit more stuff than I get rid of. And this year, well, this year wasn't a great find, a great haul, but this here is the stuff that I gathered. Let's take a look at it, shall we? So first off the pile is this power brick. It is originally from an HP printer. It's a 110, or 100 to 240 in one amp, typical 5060, so worldwide doesn't matter. It outputs two voltages, 32 volts, and can uh, handle up to 940 milliamps, which is an oddly specific number, and 16 volts, 625 milliamps. So that's a couple of voltages that I don't have in my collection of random power bricks. And I mean, yeah, you can buck boost uh, from other, th other ones, but it never hurts to have a bunch of different voltages available. If, of course, it works. So, let's show the pin out there. Well, I'm going to assume that the different one is the ground or common. So there's the first one, and that is 16.15 volts. That's pretty good. And the other one, 15.9. What? Ah, commons in the middle. I was tricked. Hey. So that's 16, like we said before. And the other combination is 32. Okay. So, there's that, and it works. Add it to the pile. Okay, the next thing that I found was this doorknob. Nothing else, just like this. Now, why, you may be asking, would I want just a doorknob? Well, those of you that have been around my channel for long enough might remember this set of really cheap lockpicks that I picked up from, uh, is it eBay or Banggood or something? So, it's, I got this, basically, just to have something to practice and play with. As lock sport ethics goes, you never pick a lock which is in use or a lock that you don't own. So now, well, that wasn't much of a challenge. Oh, well, still fun to play with. Okay, what else have I got? Well, there's these guys. These are pretty much what they look like. They're cast metal weighted bases. I'm thinking that they were maybe microphone stands, but more likely some kind of a lamp or something. And the reason that I even bothered to grab these is I was thinking that I could use them as bases for this project, making these helping hands out of these lock line things, um, and then put uh, little alligator clips on the end of those which is why I bought these. But that's a little bit of a loose fit. I was hoping that it would thread in. Uh, and I've been, the reason I haven't done this yet is I've been looking for some, for a matching thread to that. And the only thing that I've been able to find is these lug nuts. It's a weird fine thread, um, a fine pitch thread. And actually, I don't even know if these ones will fit. I'm pretty confident they will. But let's just see. Not quite. Yeah, these are half inch 20 TPI. 
this is some kind of a metric thread, I think, I, but I haven't been able to find it locally. I haven't been able to find anything that fits, but I mean, I can jam that in there and that'll work. But then the question comes is, how do I mount those? But these, I might be able to just jam it in there and stuff some epoxy in behind it and that'll be good enough. But I think the two of these on my workbench will take up too much space. So maybe if I drill you know, a couple of holes there and there, I don't know, it's, it's a thought. Worst case scenario, I take these to the scrap yard and sell them by the pound as, as scrap metal. I don't know, maybe an upcoming project, maybe not. And saving what I think is the best for last is this Craftsman 18 volt battery drill. And when I got it, the battery only had enough oomph in it to turn the chuck, maybe a quarter of a turn before it went, ugh. But I managed to charge this guy up. When I popped it out, I noticed that that looked very, very similar to the turret on the Ryobi batteries that my drill at work uses. Check that out. And the voltage is even in the same spot, negatives on this side, positives on this side, and a temp sensor there. However, the difference is in that length there, and this thing here. So the Ryobi batteries, oh, and yeah, the position. But the Ryobi batteries, won't lock into there and won't work however this charger or this this battery will fit albeit loosely onto my ryobi charger so i was able to charge it up to its full 18 volts and actually it's been off charge for a few hours now and it's pretty much, that's backwards, yes I know. But that's 20 volts. And the charging voltage is 21 volts on these NICAD packs. So let's back up for a second. Uh, so this is an 18 volt. Focus there, thank you. An 18 volt NICAD. You can see in the recycling information there battery i know it's old technology but i was able to charge it and it's holding its charge <coughs> and it works in both directions now then just from that little run that you just saw i can already smell the brush is burning which, you know, from a brush motor, from a cheap brush motor, is not a big surprise. This thing's had a little bit of use, obviously. It's got some paint splattered on it. It's got a bubble level. Hewis chuck. Clutch for different torquiness. Or you get up into drill mode and I can't stall it by hand, which is what you want. So I consider that a score. I mean, I don't have to borrow the Ryobi charger from work. I can charge it just off my power supply if I want to. Um, and actually I did start doing that until I grabbed the, uh, the thing from work. Uh, all you really need is a power supply that you can set up to about 21-ish volts. A couple of little magnets there. Doink. Oops, that's bad. Fortunately, it's shut off. Anyways, a couple of magnets, power supply you can set to 19 volts. Now, I've got my power supply over here set to just 100 milliamps, which from my reading is. Uh, is a safe charging current that you can just keep her rocking forever. Now then, since this one's sitting at higher than 19 volts right now, this isn't going to push any current into it, but that works. And if this thing could go up to 21 volts, and I, I could attach, see, a boost converter to it, or I could use um, a different power supply to feed this. Say, for instance, 
ready to go. That new one that I just got. Um, oh yeah, it's in the bin over there. So that one can do up to 32 volts. Then I can push or use my uh, uh, buck converter here, my current limiting buck converter after that. And I'll be able to get up to the 21 volts if I don't happen to have my, uh, my Ryobi charger here. So, just for fun, this battery and indeed the Ryobi NICAD batteries. Uh, it even says somewhere on here that it's NICAD, I'm pretty sure. These older ones, anyways. Uh, yeah, it's got the NICAD recycling symbol on it, too. This one actually is completely toasted. Uh, it's got to go in for recycling or throwing away or whatever. Um, or I suppose I could rebuild it, but since it's a work one, I don't really want to spend my own money rebuilding it. Um, but what I was thinking on doing on this one is to either replace it with more NICADs, um, and to do that, you'd need, okay, so NICADs are 1.2 volts per cell. Um, divide that by 18 volts, you get 15 cells inside here, all in series. Um, to do 18 volts with, oh, I don't know, uh, lithium. 18650s, uh, that would be, is that 4 inch, and so to do 18 volts with 18650s, which are, are they about 4.2 volt uh, at their absolute peak, you'd need about four and a half of them. If you did five of them, five times four, that's 20 volts. That's pretty close to the charging voltage. That's not going to hurt anything. You'd want to put some charge protection circuitry on there unless you have a smart charger which can detect the battery chemistry and and work from there safely. But I'm not going to do that. The other option is you could get a whole bunch of uh, nickel metal hydride double uh, A's and build yourself a pack like that which would fit inside there. Now then, nickel metal hydrides get what? Not a huge amount of milliamp hours out of it. This one doesn't say what it is for milliamp hours. Does the Ryobi, which is also nickel metal, or which you could also probably do. Nah, it doesn't either. But that would be better than nothing. However, let's just pop this sucker open and see what's what inside it, shall we? Okay. Slide that off. So from the math, we expected there to be 15 NICAD cells in there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Hmm. That's an easier way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Right. And there's the temperature sensor on the blue wire going up to that. Okay, absolutely no surprises. So these are in fact NICAD. It says so right there. We knew that. These, as far as I can tell from my searching, are called the sub-C cell. Which means that they're a little bit smaller than a C cell. Um, I guess. Um, but, like I said, I could... You, and you can find those at battery places, but could easily do it with a whole shitload of, well, that's 15 double A's um, to make up for the same 15 there. Nickel metal hydride and NICAD have about the same voltages. Um, similar charging, not exactly the same, but close enough that they're not going to explode in, in fire and burn your house down, especially if you're charging them slowly. So you can, I found on eBay, you can get uh, strings of 15 already packaged in this configuration or just loose cells and you tab them yourself. 
Um, and they're in the you know, 30 to $50 range, depending on where you get them and how reputable you want. But since these work right out of the box, I'm right out of the bin, I guess, technically. I'm not too stressed about that. I'm just going to use it the way it is. And for home use, that's perfectly fine. I don't use a drill all that much anyway. I've got a cheap crappy drill press. I've got a corded drill. If I need you know, longevity or torque or accuracy, this thing will probably be a screw gun and as for home gamer use, it's perfectly fine. Just for comparison, let's take a peek inside the dead Ryobi pack. That guy doesn't want to come out of its turret. Oh, there you go. Okay, man, get out. Okay, so... A little condom of some sort in there. Maybe that goes under there. Uh, anyway... We have all kinds of crustiness here. Uh, I mean, from a casual glance, it's pretty much exactly the same pack. At 15 cells, a little temp sensor there, same NICAD size. But, well that might be glue off there, but that's definitely not glue. That's, that's fuzziness. This thing is, ooh, yeah, look at that. This thing is completely shot, and when I throw my voltmeter across pairs of cells, so these two are in series here, so normally you'd expect to find about uh, 2.4 if it's in good shape, a third of a millivolt, yeah, not even, just like bugger all, really, go for a bit further out, yeah, these things just... There's essentially nothing there. These things are completely dead. Well, the resistance across them is even. Actually, that guy is 0 .02, or no, 0 0.2 ohms. So, these things are completely shot. They're actually shorted internally. Okay, but... Overall, construction-wise, it's 99% the same, right? There's a fair to middling chance that they came out of the same factory, even. Or just down the street from each other. But, yeah. yeah take this in and recycle it. Well, that was kind of fun and somewhat useful. I've actually got some, found some things that, uh, that I'm sure I can make use of. Not as much as previous years, but yeah, it's free. What are you going to do? As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, comments and questions down in the comment field below. I will talk to you later.